Welcome to the New Grounds Podcast. Today's episode hosted by Voices by Corey. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the New Grounds Podcast. Today, we are having a double feature. If you guys tuned into the episode earlier with Zinzinex, we had Rebecca Doodles on. That was actually a really good episode. We hope you guys enjoyed that. But we also felt that it would be great to, you know, give you some more content for the day. Um, partially because Zin wanted to schedule an episode when I scheduled an episode already. So this is why we're having a double feature today. <laughs> and um, I'm good. I, I'm good going. Really glad that <laughs> good going, you got to give me give major props to Zinn. But uh, yeah, I, we, we have another great guest on here today. Uh, he goes by Danny Goodshirt. Uh, he is uh, he's been all over Newgrounds uh, for a while now. He's been a, a collab organizer. He's put together some some awesome animations on new grounds. And he is currently in the process of funding and creating a brand new anime, which we're going to be talking about tonight. But before we get into all of that, I want to introduce Danny. Danny, say hello to the new grounds fans and give them a little bit of info about you and who you are and why you're so damn sexy. What's up new grounds. Um, yeah, my name is Danny. Um, Danny good shirt because my friends used to say Danny with the good shirt. We were drunk at a party. That's where that name came from. It's a really bad like inside thing that no one cares about. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I am hosting uh, Dr. Good for the third year in a row. So you guys got like one week left to submit your your horror spooky cartoons to me. Uh, so get on that. That could be the the very first thing that we talk about. Um, yeah, so Dr. Good's Operating Theater, it is a Halloween collaboration, uh, a, like animation collaboration um, that you've been doing for a couple of years now. Ultimately, talk about what it is, what the whole concept of Dr. Good's is, is all about and why you wanted to put it together in the first place. Uh, me and my good buddy, Rana X, uh, we just wanted to make a halloween show and then i was like let's do a collab and then we didn't really know what to do so we decided to go with this kind of robot chicken like um you know anthology series but also have a host character and instead of like robot chicken where it's like you see the chicken watch the tv right at the beginning and then it's just sketches um we wanted it to cut back to the host like a couple times throughout it kind of creates like a little bit of a story um and yeah that's pretty much it we just wanted to make some spooky shit for october and and i was fortunate to be a, a very small part in um last year's rendition and it was really fun you you got you have some some very good animators who've helped out with the first two so far who are some of the the new uh, if there's any new animators for you know the third year of dr good's operating theater who are some of the the animators that you're excited to have aboard? And same with the the voice actors that you have aboard. Like, who are some? Leave me off the list. <laughs> who are some of the the other voice actors that have been a part of Doctor Goods that you are thrilled to have a, a part of the project? Um, well, Amanda Parker has always been on Doctor Goods. Yeah, every year she's amazing. Same with Julie Park. Honestly, this year's a little different because I've been doing Astromon so much that. I've I've helped write some of the the sketches for people, but I haven't really dealt with the voice acting as much. Some people are just making whatever they want and sending it over, which is pretty cool. Um, it's a you know, it's part of like what we're trying to do in the first place. The first couple of years, I was kind of taking control of like of writing each not each skit, but if people asked me for help, I was gonna help them. Um, so this year, it's a little bit. I'm a little bit separated from it, but I would say, of course, Gianni is Dr. Good again. He's said he was going to voice Dr. Good until, uh, you know, for the rest of his life if he has to. But 
as long as <laughs> as long as it's uh being made you know he wants to be a part of it um and then who else i think it's just it's it's little smaller group of actors this time around pretty sure but my buddy maddie burrito um he is coming back he was the first sketch in the first Dr. Good. And he's coming back and actually he asked me to voice act in one of his, uh, in his cartoon and his sketch for it. So I'm playing a fetus in his, in his cartoon this year. And yeah, that's what I was recording today. And I'm, my voice is kind of fucked from it, but it's going to be a ton of fun though. I was going to say, I, I don't know how much um, voice acting you've done so far. Uh, is this like the one of the first things that you've ever voice acted in or have you done other projects before? I've done grandmas in two things. In uh, the first Tom Fulp cartoon I did, which was called Grandma's Cookies, which is about Tom Fulp getting kicked out of his grandma's house. <laughs> because I, for what, who knows why? Um, in, uh, I guess... I called Tom Fulb. He answers the phone and it's his grandma screaming at him. And that was me. And then in in Harpy's um, Harpy Carp last year, his doctor good. There's a there's a grandma. And I also voiced that. I'm pretty sure that's it. Oh, no. I was also in Maddie Brito's um, one of his one of his cartoons. I played a doctor who was like super disinterested and like looked like he was going to die or something just like yeah whatever <laughs> so i've done a few like a few small things but not very much i love it man yeah yeah i i know i i know that um I, i've seen grandma's cookies it's a hilarious uh animation you guys should check that out it's uh if you go to danny's page it's part of his 2019 submissions um just to you know the continue um all the different collaborations you've worked on um, we also put one together last year at the end of the year. It was kind of like a, a spur of the moment type collaboration and it was called Emperor Santa. Yes. And that one was really fun. It was just a, it's literally, that is the epitome of what robot chicken is. It was just a bunch of different small skits, like literally lasted five to 10 seconds. Yeah. That, and one, that one was tricky because I didn't want to do, Oh, another doctor good. But for Christmas, we kind of wanted to do something different. Um, I don't know how different it actually was, but but it was funny because it it kind of had a story to it, and then it just turned into random sketches, and it's it's very like it's very weird to to, to watch. It, it it definitely is weird, but it was also really fun because yeah, it it did have a little storyline at the beginning, and it's basically Santa watching his favorite hol uh, holiday classics. You know, we made fun of Die Hard. We made fun of Pokemon, which was really weird. We made fun of Dragon Ball Z. Uh, <laughs> there's a bunch of just like weird little skits, but it was also really fun. Yeah, that's and like it's funny because it was supposed to be him watching the Christmas story, and then <laughs> the Christmas story tape, the VHS was taped over, but it ended up just being like him watching random shows. But it was it was fun though. It was very fun to make. <laughs> That yeah, and, and it would and, and just the the amount of time that we had to make it because I think we pretty much did it all throughout November and we released it before Christmas. So there wasn't a lot of time to put it together, but the was, animators worked so hard on getting their clips done and, and put together in time for us to hand oh, out. Oh yeah, that took about one month. I think it was it was about it was roughly one month, maybe a little less or a little more. But yeah, I didn't think that was gonna happen. I was I was very certain that was not going to work out and I was pleasantly surprised that that which is always a, a good feeling. That collaboration kind of had the same vibe as one of the other ones we did. You kind of have that that mainstay as one of the head collab uh, collaborators when it comes to any animations that you're you've made a name for yourself in that. So it, it's really cool because you're also you're giving that opportunity for uh, animators, veteran and amateur, the opportunity to showcase what they can do. And that's, that's one of the reasons why I love you, buddy. And, and one of the other collaborations you did earlier in the year was, uh, for Pico day, uh, for Pico day. And yeah. it was called fist of full and it did so freaking well. And I'm so glad that everyone enjoyed this one, go a little bit more into fist of full, um, how he came up with the idea 
um, mm. and how everything was executed because it, it kind of fell along the line of production of what we were doing for Emperor Santa. Yeah, it was weird as hell to make because, like, you know, when you're doing a collab with animators and they all ask, what should we do? And then it's like, okay, I need to write a script for this, which is kind of a bizarre way to even do a collab. Usually collabs are just, you know, this is like the topic, do whatever you want. But Fist of Fall, I wrote a script for it and we just kind of threw the, you know, each animator did a chunk of it. Pretty much the what gave me the idea was a year prior for Pico Day, I drew Tom Fulp as Bruce Lee with the Bruce Lee suit, the yellow tracksuit. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, more recently t- to last year's Pico Day, I was watching Fist of Fury and there's this really like amazing scene where Bruce Lee tries to walk into a park and the guard is like, you can't come in here. And it's this like racial thing where it's like, you know, no Chinese people allowed. And he's like, there's a sign that says like no dogs allowed or something. And then he's like, no, like, I don't, I'm going to butcher the scene because I, it's been a while, but and that's pretty much it. He like kicks the sign. Right. And then I was like, I want Tom Fulp to like have that same moment. That'd be super funny. So we kind of built the entire rest of it around just that um, Fist of Fury, Bruce Lee scene. That was that was pretty much it. Yeah. And and I love I love that animation just because yeah, it's based off of Tom Fulp being Bruce Lee, but at the same time, it, it turns into this full on battle between Newgrounds mm-hmm. legends and just other characters from the internet. Um, like we take on um, like Pico, uh, yeah, Pico takes on. Um, there's the um, deviant art, the student. deviant art, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, there's also Aaron Hansen, isn't it? Not the real, yep, uh, <laughs> not, not the real Hansen. You, you have the, the knockoff voice actor who tries to tries to do his best Aaron Hansen impression. Yeah, that one was really fun. I actually had a lot of fun <laughs> recording as Aaron, and then you had uh, you had Captain Square off against Mario. It was there's so there, there were so many good scenes, and you had um. Uh, you had Harpy Carp screaming as Oni and and oh, Zach. Oh yeah, and Oni and Zach kam- <laughs> kamikazing. Kamikaze <laughs> into the the YouTube the YouTube star. Yeah, it was it was goofy as fuck. Also, I was watching Yu Yu Hakusho at the time. So that's what gave me the idea for like for the tournament thing. I was like, we're just gonna do the Bruce Lee scene, and then it's gonna turn into Yu Yu Hakusho, but like with goofy ass internet characters. And that's pretty much it. It was fun. Yeah, it it and I was I was very pleased with um you know the the success it had um on Newgrounds. A lot of people gave it a lot of love. We had some very good animators uh, on board for it. Like right now, it has over eighty five hundred views, um, an average score of uh, four and a half out of five. Um, it was front page. It got daily second. It was you know very successful. And I know that we were all you know pretty pleased with how it uh, turned out. And and like I said, it was kind of like one of those we were crunch, you know, pushing the the time limit, making sure we got it out before uh, you know Pico Day hit, and we did. Yeah. And it's that was and also, it, it was great. That was also the first animation I did all the sound for, and I remember the like day before I published it, I spent I sat in my chair for like nine hours straight, and I was just <laughs> I like didn't eat anything. My girlfriend was just like, you look terrible. Please stop doing that. <laughs> and I'm, just, I'm like hunched over and just like, I must fucking download more sounds off of this website. and Find the perfect poop splatter sound. Yeah. Dude, I, I know your pain. Like when, you know, when we're putting together skits for the, uh, the voice acting collaboration, you know, it, it gets it, it's so easy to put the audio together, like get it all synced up and timed out properly. Mm-hmm. Finding music is is easy to do, um, especially if we have one of the composers put music together. But you know, sometimes it's it's very easy to find a tune that <clears throat> works well for the skit oh, or yeah. multiple tunes, just depending. And we had, finding uh, sorry, we had a uh, Snuggles did some music for that. Yes, yeah, yeah we had I know, we had Mr. Snuggles put a, uh, put together a lot of the tracks for Fist of Fall Band. He did a great job. He he's always then, done good with. He's always done a great job when, you know, just making little tracks here and there. 
And then the last song, I don't remember, but uh, Bro Bro Son sent it to me, and it, it ended up being like the perfect song to end it with. Um, oh, d- dude, the mu- the music worked that was like, so tremendously good. well in Fistful. Like everything about it was great, and and the the amount oh. of hours you put into sound design, it came out so great. Like uh, you have to be proud about it, man. You have to be happy, happy jazz shit. Literally, like the one of my favorite songs on Newgrounds. <laughs> it's so good <laughs> by uh, Father Father of Death. It's so fucking good. Yeah, I I know all about you know, sifting through sound effects and just trying to find the one sound that is specifically what you're looking for. Like I'll I'll sit through. Um, like I remember in one of the skits uh, for the original uh, voice acting collaboration, uh, we had a, a skit where. Uh, someone th- uh, one of the characters throws another character in, in a tub of acid and I had to get a combined sound of like skin melting and burning in this acid and it took me forever to find those two sounds and just make them work together so I know your struggle <laughs> I know how tough it can be <laughs> yeah sound design is crazy and honestly I have um, like one person that I go to for this uh, Q-U-E-B-I however you say that Kwebi, sorry if I butcher your name, your Newgrounds name, but yeah, they're awesome and they do sound for like almost everything I do because I'm lazy as shit. But <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's been a couple of things that I've done and I actually do enjoy doing sound, but um, sometimes I'm just like I need somebody more experienced to do this because I'm not that great. But it, it you know it it does take. It does take a lot of talent to like master sound design in general. You know, I, when when I took on, you know, when I decided to do the the voice acting collaboration, that was the first time I really attempted to do sound design uh, for any audio mm-hmm. skit. And the more I've done it, the more I I've understand the concept of timing and mixing audio together and getting um you know mastering the different levels for sound effects and music and making sure that they're all in tune with one with one another and and it, it, and yeah dude like it is a it is a tedious process and you know I, I i don't consider myself a master in it but i know i've grown more who is absolutely brilliant with it is nick senny he is is absolutely fantastic he i i, I don't know if he's ever studied it but Holy cow, whenever he's done sound design for us, he just blows it out of the park. Like That's he awesome. has all the intricate little sound effects and and the right musical tones, like the notes hit perfectly. It's like holy cow. Yeah, he it I know it is a uh, a tedious process. So and just knowing yeah, like knowing how much time and effort you put into it, holy cow, like it's you know, it, it worked so well for honestly. For, if if I was like I don't know, s- smarter or just <laughs> had more time it wouldn't have been that bad but i took the last day i remember i like took off work so i could stay home from the time i woke up to the time i went to sleep to finish the sound design for that because <laughs> i was that's it i just oh actually i did sound for um emperor santa that was the first one and then i think i did I think I did the Pico Day one too. Now it says it says that you joined Newgrounds back in 2018. So you've been on the site for a few years now. Oh, I've been um, I was on it longer. That's when I made the account. Or at least joined, yeah, made yeah. your account. So ultimately what what brought you to Newgrounds in the first <clears throat> place? Like what 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 about the site piqued your interest and made you want to be a part of the community here? Uh I had a f- well, one of my friends, actually, the animator who did um, the Grandma's Cookie animation, they, I went to school with them, like middle school, or probably elementary school, whatever. I grew up with them. And they were on Newgrounds back then when we were like 12 years old. So like I was always watching Newgrounds. Um, I, what actually made me join was, and like actually contribute to Newgrounds was actually just the the realization that I have I had three friends who were really good at animation but they didn't know each other at all so the first thing I did was Hardcore Jake which is a really (laughs) crazy silly um, concept but I shared my idea with them and I was like hey you guys want to make like a group and we can all like 
talk about this. And then like now we're all friends and we all have like, you know, well, I was friends with all of them, but now they're all friends with each other. And it's like we have like this little group where we make shit. So it, it was really just the realization that I had animator friends. And then I was like, well, I'm not very good at art. So you guys want to do this idea? And I, I've always been a writer. I was a musician writing songs and, you know, lyrics and all that stuff in high school and after high school. Um, when I was a kid, like really young, I wanted to be an author. So like I was always writing stories and, and all that. So it all just kind of like, you know, went full circle. And I started writing uh, after I wrote Hardcore Jig. I was like, this was super fun to make. You know, I was with my friends. My friends recorded the, you know, the audio for it, the sound, the, um, the voices. And it was just like, it was a ton of fun. So then I, I went on and made a couple other ones. And I think I made the um, Lynx Harem, the Legend of Zelda parody after that, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, but it was, it was pretty much just like, I've always wanted to write, you know, and it just kind of, it worked out. Now, now you say, you know, at, in your youth, you, uh, you wanted to be a writer and I know you've tested your hand in, in music as well. Um, and you know, you clearly stay, um, you know, you, you clearly have stuck around with trying to write. And, um, a lot of the music that is on Newgrounds is, is that all stuff that you've put together or is it stuff that you've collaborated with, um, with others? And if not, what, what were some of the, who are some of the other composers who inspired you to make music and who are some of the writers that inspired you to write your own material? Uh, for music, it's so different. It's crazy because I actually like stopped um, writing stories and stuff at a you know at a young age, um, and I just started playing music all the time because I was obsessed with bands. You know, like you know, sixth grade, uh, whatever, Green Day, all that type of shit. And uh, when I got into high school, I got way more into like punk music. If you know who Jeff Rosenstock is, he's huge now, but back then he was in a his band called Bomb the Music Industry. And it was all about, um, it started off all about how it's possible to make music by yourself and make music you love by yourself. And you don't need all these other things. You could, you don't need major, you don't need record labels at all. That was the whole point. You know, you, yeah. could, you could do all the stuff yourself, cut all, you know, cut all those people who want to take your money and shit out. And, uh, and you can, you can still, produce this stuff that you love even in your own bedroom it's possible and he proved that and then so i thought you know when i was 15 i thought that was pretty badass and uh, and then as his band grew it became more about collabing with your friends instead of like you know don't don't act like you're you know you're working with your colleagues when you're in a band it's like you're supposed to be making art you're supposed to be expressing yourself and uh enjoying your your time while you're doing it so all those types of things i i definitely connected with and i feel like it's similar to kind of like the newgrounds um kind of collab space as well yeah absolutely you, you you definitely get that vibe um especially with everything that you've put together like you've taken those components of you know you're not working with colleagues you're working with friends and you want to you're creating art and you're also trying to create something fun in the process i i as you know for all the stuff that we've worked on together you know just from you know our talks in the server in your server you know we've always been it hasn't been all right we have to hit this deadline you guys have to have it by you know you have to give me an update at this day, at this time, if you're if you don't hit that deadline, you know, you're out of the collaboration. <laughs> so it was like, hey, so what do you think? What do you guys think about this kid? Do you think it's funny? Yeah, it's hilarious. All right, cool. Let's let's put some. Hey, listen, listen to something. Listen to what Gianni recorded. This is absolutely hilarious. We have to, you know, we have to make something out of this. Like, you know, it's always been fun. It's always been unique. And, you know, you could tell it's just a bunch of, you know, creators having a good time and trying to, you know you know, create art and have fun in the process. So that that's why I've always loved working with you. Um, you know, and one of the reasons why I wanted to get you on the show is just to see, just to let everybody see, you know, how beneficial you've been to the Newgrounds community over these last couple of years. Um, you know, 
one question I want to ask you is, you know, how, how does it feel being someone who does give others an opportunity to showcase what they can do as animators, as illustrators, as voice actors and composers? Like, how, how does, like, what does that mean to you? Um, it's interesting because I, I feel like as long as it is, um, it comes together and that, you know, and we all enjoy what we're doing, you know, and we work together to make the thing and the thing is made. It's great. Um, but sometimes I, it's a little weird because I don't animate very much. You know, I think I did one animation for Scott's Cartoon Network collab. And it's like two seconds long. But like, that's the only animation. <laughs> yeah. So like, and I understand how brutal animation is. Like, it's crazy. It, I guess art in general, you know, it's super hard and tedious. and It's a lot of work. So like, sometimes I'm like, you know, oh shit, I feel like I'm running a, like a fucking sweatshop. Or something, you know, <laughs> I like, you know, I, I try to make it as, as good of an experience as, as it can be, but. At the end of the day, it's like, this is work. And I understand when people are like, you know, uh, how much are you paying? You know, I don't get really mad at that question because I understand. It's like, yeah, yeah, I don't. Sorry, this is a collab. This is what we do, you know, but, <laughs> but I, th I don't know. So I, I do think of it as giving people opportunities. And um, I think that's obvious, you know, it's obviously a good thing. But there is that kind of that weird feeling of like, man, am I doing enough in this, you know? That's always yeah. kind of in the back of my head. So I don't know it, if that and, answered your question or not. But. Oh yeah, it, it does. Like it, it shows you that uh, it shows that you have an understanding of what it takes to do what they do, you know, and, and, you know, you mentioned it with, um, you know, your animation you did for the cart, tar, uh, cartoon network, uh, cartoon network collab. Yes. Um, you know, th you said that was the very first animation you ever did. It was a quick little, you know, five second animation of Johnny Bravo, you know, asking, you know, like, hey, mama, <laughs> you <wanna> fuck? <laughs> and, and, you know, and you asked me to, to voice it for you. And I said, yeah. absolutely. And it was and it was hilarious. It was you know, fun. You, you, you said it's it was like, even with it being as short as it was, it was, you know, tedious and, and it was hard and it was tough. And it just gives you another insight as to what animators have to go through in order to, you know, complete a full on animation. Oh, yeah. What would you say? Yeah, what would you say is what was the hardest part of just animating, you know, that that just that small clip? What was the hardest part about animating it? Uh, when you're done with sketching, you have to do the the line work and then you have to clean it up and then you have to fucking color it. And then <laughs> it's just like never ending <laughs> stuff to do. And then you you realize like, oh shit this part looks terrible. So you have to redo the whole thing. And then it's, you know, <laughs> it's just like a cycle of, you know, at some point, um, I don't know whose quote this is, but it's like, just stop at like 80% and don't ever try to reach a hundred percent. Just stop at 80 because you'll never get to a hundred. Yeah. Someone you know, said they, that to me one time and I was like, that's, that's fair. I've heard another quote just like that before where it's kind of like, like perfection is always like always leads to failure pretty much yeah. it's you know you you can try to be as perfect as you want to but in the grand scheme of things you're never going to fully you know perfect whatever it is you're you know you're gonna be putting it together you're always gonna find that one thing like shit that's not good i gotta go back and do this so it, you know that is a good tip you know going to at least getting to where you want it to be and have it be you know even if it's 80 percent of what you ultimately want it to be, you know, at least you're, you know, you're putting a stop to what you've put together and you've done something and now you can grow on it and you can build off of what you've done already. You know, it, it's, it, it actually is good advice because the more you shoot for perfectionism, the more you're going to struggle. <laughs> oh anything. yeah. I know. You'll, you'll I never know. hit that level. Right. I know animators, artists who, you know, they're so critical of themselves that they never finish anything, you know? And it's like, exactly. It's, poison to do that absolutely now one i, I want to transition here a little bit now that you have a, a full understanding of what it takes to you know put an animation together even if it is a, a few seconds long we transition into you wanting to put together your own full-on featured animation your own creation your own anime 
and it is called Astromon. You have released uh, the Indiegogo for it, you know, not too long ago. We're starting funding for it. It's an original idea that you came up with, <clears throat> and I know I'm excited uh, just to be a part of it. I've, you know, I've read through um, the early renditions or, or the early uh, copies of your pilot episode. Um, I've read the edits and just the idea itself is beautiful. It's awesome. And it's going to be freaking cool. So I hope so. <laughs> for, <laughs> I know so. So for those listening right now, give them an idea or, or just give them the, the lowdown of what Astromon is and how you came up with the idea for this anime. Um, so I could just start from the beginning. Uh, I could uh, read you like the... Um synopsis real quick i have it written somewhere um yeah so it's the overall story is pretty much um a yakuza clan's powerful weapon is stolen and their highest ranking uh yakuza lieutenants are all wiped out murdered by these supernatural monsters so the only people left to get this powerful um weapon back is her son, who happens to be a drug addicted shut in, and then his um, fake sister, which is like the mom hires a rental sister. It's an actual thing in Japan, which I found very interesting. So I kind of wanted to incorporate this that idea into um, into this, and then it's pretty much the group of friends have to go. So it's it's a bit of a it's a bit of a satire on like hero's journey stuff, but also the layers of it is like we all know <laughs> that in our society right um we have like people who, like our old elders they were supposed you know if you look at any society the elders are supposed to take care of everyone else and you know obviously uh, there's been a lot of heat over the boomers lately the last few years <laughs> everyone hates the fucking boomers i wonder why because they they <laughs> Because they failed everybody. So the whole joke <laughs> here is like, is the Yakuza are the protectors of the city, right? And to give you a little bit more like uh, detail, the, this is one of the last cities on earth. It's one or one of the only cities on earth. And it's all run by gangsters. So basically, um, the gangsters have this team that they protect the city from the supernatural monsters but the supernatural monsters get stronger and then they completely fuck up the gangsters right so what happens when your uh society's the people who are supposed to protect society what happens when they fail you the young people have to take responsibility in their own hands as they say right they always say you're the future you ha it's your duty to save the world or whatever the fuck you know <laughs> whether it's anything though they say that about climate change nuclear weapons they say that about not to get political and shit but like that's just what i've been hearing my whole life you know and then i look around at my friends and like other young younger people than me and we're kind of fucked up <laughs> you know <laughs> it's true <laughs> so like we're supposed to be the heroes that's kind of the satire that's the quote-unquote dark humor i guess is like you're, we're following a anime style shonen story, you know, but the characters are very mentally strained and they're very, um, they're fucked up, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, that's kind of the main idea. But how I got there, this is kind of the, the silliest shit ever, but this whole thing started because my friend Matt, Matty Burrito and my friend Ranit X were talking about how to be a successful animator or how to be successful in the animation online world right and uh matt if you go to maddie burrito's youtube channel you'll see a lot of pokemon videos that he fucking slaved over and i mean these are 20 something minute animations these are he's a good animator too so like this isn't cheap stuff isn't quick this is work yeah um he basically told me you know like he took a whole year of his life and pretty much animated this, these po one of the videos. I forget which one it is, but it's the Pokemon. One. So we were talking about how, you know, jokingly about how in order to become successful in this type of industry, 
you have to make Pokemon parodies. And uh, <laughs> it's like, you know, you have to. So I was like, has anybody ever made like a genre parody or even just a genre piece? Like, what would it look like to have your own Pokemon style world, right? Like a, a whole yeah. universe that's like, it's a mon genre. So it's like the monsters, either Digimon, uh, Pokemon, mm-hmm. uh, whatever the other ones are, Yu-Gi-Oh type shit. Um, yeah. And I was like, I wonder how that would look. And then at the time, this was, I believe, 2018 when I started this, um, maybe 2019, 2018, 2019. Um, as I hope all of you know, Fro, veteran Newground user Fro. Um, yeah, he Coach is, Fro. Yes, he was doing writing contests at the time. So I took like two days. If you want to go find it, it's there somewhere. Uh, <laughs> Um, but I wrote this Astromon thing for one of the writing contests. I took like a day and wrote it. It's it's uh, it's fucking horrendous, but <laughs> <laughs> it's really stupid. But it was it was supposed to be like a combination of like Cowboy Bebop and Pokemon. So it was like you have these bounty hunter characters and they're like, you know, whatever fucking idiots and and uh they're trying to catch this these monsters that came from this asteroid that that fell and then i i kept sitting on these ideas and i kept growing and i'll be 100 percent honest i haven't i finished the pilot about a month ago well and and that's the thing though like i I remember you sending me the first edits of or the first drafts thank you for reading like i kept (laughs) annoying i know I i was like I know I'm annoying the fuck out of you, but I need someone to read this shit. <laughs> no, and, and that's the thing, though, because, you know, I, and I wanted I, I realized something today. So, like, you know, you and I were going back and forth on on Twitter um, earlier today. And you said, yeah, you never sent in your uh, original audition for Yo. <laughs> yeah, you didn't. <laughs> so, so, like, I, I, I remember I, I remember you posting on um, on Twitter a long time ago. And this yeah. is how you and I met. I reached that you say, Hey, I'm looking to cast. Um, uh, it was, I think it was for Charlie and for yo, like I'm looking to cast these characters for my you, original anime. You were if like, you're, interested. you're like, I'm going to send you an audition. And then I was like, sweet. And then <laughs> I never got it. <laughs> well, well, it. Well, here's the thing. Cause I remembered it because I could have swore that I, 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 I originally, I originally um, like recorded an audition and I do. I have two different files. One uh, from the one that you asked me to, and then uh, the original one. And I think I remember what happened. So I reached out to you. You said, hey, man, I got my audition ready to go. Do you want to hear it? And you said, oh, yeah, no, I got somebody else. I'm, I'm going to have them voice you. I'm like, oh. Yeah. Was, well, fuck me. Yeah, you're right. Because <laughs> so, so you're I think right. that's ultimately what happened. But, you know, that that was the first time you and I got, um, you know, introduced were like that was the first time you and i were introduced to one another you're right and you said hey man like whatever happens though like i want to work with you with this because you're a new ground you're a new grounder and new grounds is fucking awesome like yeah so yeah i did something weird with this which i've never done before but i went to twitter for some reason i have no fucking idea why i did that but um oh i think (laughs) it was just for the voice acting because i knew i i had gianni who i actually met from new grounds like five years ago um and then i think that was it everyone else is from twitter for some reason yeah it, it, it was cool though because you you've also got um june to voice charlie who's also very well known like on the voice acting side of twitter yeah. he's very well known he's very respected um and it's very cool that he's a part of this project and he said yes to it um and when you asked me to come aboard uh, to voice yo i was super excited because i knew who the cast was like i knew that charlie was voicing um like i i knew that he was uh voicing uh june. dusty oh but, gianni yeah yeah like I, I like i knew that gianni was in it. i knew that june was in it i knew that um i knew that amanda was in it and and i i haven't met nikki yet but when i heard her i'm like holy cow she's amazing yeah i was super excited because the voice cast is awesome and then I, you know, we ended up um, reaching out to a bunch of different ad, uh, animators on Newgrounds. You know, we had Wanda Boy who mm-hmm. helped out with um, the just the trailer animation. Uh, who, who did who did you get to help out with backgrounds again? Uh, who who was that? Uh, Bria B R E A, and then her Newgrounds is B R E A B R Z Z. 
Yeah, and, and Bria did such a fantastic job with the backgrounds. There's all these little she Easter also, eggs in there. She also and, animated. She also animated like some of the more the best shots as well. They're all good. Like the, 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 the ending, like the more, ending, uh, the ending shot, like, and then like good. the one where the monster smiles, like does that creepy smile, and then she Hell did, yeah. she did the one where the uh, Monica, the girl with purple hair, when she runs towards the camera with the sword. She did that one, which is probably my favorite shot of the, the teaser. It, it, it was done so well, and it, it just shows how much dedication has been put into creating this trailer. And and like I said, you know, you sent me the early rough drafts of of the pilot episode, and with each edit, I just saw like just more and more setting building, more development from the characters. There, there was just more and more going into it. That just made it more interesting, made it more unique. And yes, it you know, it, it, it does fall into the category of you know a, a mon anime, but there's just this this greater care uh, there's just this greater story that deals with the characters. Like in a sense, y- yes, there's the Astromon, but right in a sense, it, it follows more like it follows more so of the characters and builds off their story. Like yeah, it doesn't <clears throat> I I don't think I finish. I think I like stop talking for some reason but yeah so basically um yeah so like it started off as like a supposed to be like a mon thing like oh i had the whole joke was like they had this one there was the one special uh astromon that they had to go capture for the yakuza or the whatever it was at the time um and then i just kept building on the characters to the point where like the monsters changed completely and then it was like a whole different thing because i was putting in inspiration from all these different parts of you know things that i grew up with and actually the character the main character dusty i've been sort of developing this character for like 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 many years i've been writing the same type of character ever since i watched the show welcome to the nhk um, which is a brutally dark uh comedy about a um, a shut-in in Japan who's really fucked up. But also, I read <laughs> I read this book called No Longer Human, which is it's a very old Japanese book. Um, but it's also about this very like very depressed person. And actually, the author was pretty fucked up himself. Um, but I just found this the way they wrote the stories very interesting. And the, these characters, they're very. Um, they rant a lot and they, they have this very high energy, um, even though they're alone. And I just kind of I like that contrast of like super just like anxious and kind of like mentally distraught and crippled and all that. But also like when they talk they're it's like they're talking to an audience, but then you look around and nobody's there. It's like I always enjoyed that sort of like when you're inside somebody's head, the psych- psychological yeah. part of it. Um, so I had those two, these two stories kind of really influenced that character. And I was actually writing this story before, possibly before I even made my Newgrounds account. Um, I was just sitting around just trying to make this, this story. I don't know. It might have been afterwards, but either way. Um, it was it was just like a very slow process of developing each thing, and I'm also a huge, like, uh, Takashi Takashi Miike fan. He's a Japanese filmmaker who's done really crazy horror movies like Ichi the Killer, Audition, um, and he did this movie called First Love, which came out a few years ago, which is like a a gangster romantic comedy in a way. It's very strange but it's it's fucking hilarious and it's very like uh the way he makes his his movies is i love the way he the way he does and so i just kept like taking different inspirations you know i've always been a martial arts fan i practice muay thai myself i'm actually a muay thai i instruct youth classes um so i i made this character where she's like based off of a a muay thai uh fighter and that's kind of her design which kind of changed recently a little bit. That's sort of like foreshadowing a little bit, but um, yeah, I just kept 
building these these characters off of these uh, different influences and, and that sort of thing. I was gonna say, like, like the more that you're diving into what inspired you for the different characters, like I, I'm already, I've already recognized that just by what I've read and what I know about their their characteristics and their personalities, you know, based off of um, you know char- the characters who inspired you with you know being in isolation and and having like their inner monologues, knowing the dynamic of Dusty and what he goes through. Um, I, 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 I definitely see where you're going with your, uh, your inspiration for that. Yeah. And it's, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a lot of different shit, <laughs> but, uh, I forgot what <laughs> I was going to say. I was going to say something. Weird. Yeah. Cause, uh, Dusty is, he's very isolated, but he's also like, I guess in modern terminology, he's, he's like a very privileged person, right? His mom is the most powerful Yakuza boss in the um in, in the uh the city right so like he lives in this big house so he has that opportunity to be in isolation and to be this sort of mess that he's created um or that's you know that's created it so at the start of the story you almost don't even feel bad for him because it's like that's sort of the the, the satire though because if you look at uh, hikikomori which is the japanese condition of being withdrawn into your room for six months or more i actually wrote an essay in college on this shit <laughs> so uh, <laughs> um but like yeah so like you kind of see this the whole intro of the show is like you see the city and it's all this fucked up shit happening and, um it's very kind of run down and then it kind of cuts to this you know the north side of the city and then it's like more beautiful and big spread out and then you go into this little window and you go into his his bedroom and you just see like the most fucking chaotic person you've ever seen that's you know but also you have to recognize like that is you know his mom gave him this house you know it's not like he owns the house himself it's a yakuza house which all that shit is explained within the story but but then later on you kind of once you get to know him a little bit more you find out there's actually more to it than just oh he's some spoiled rich asshole who's like taking advantage if that makes sense yeah i eat and like that's the image that you're presented uh for dusty within you know the first bits of of this of the anime right but the more you get to know him and you dive into his personality and everything that that there is about dusty you start seeing that oh shit he's not just some spoiled you know kid who is part of the the yakuza family like there's more layers it's like he's fucked up right it's like what the consequences that consequences of of uh you know what happens as a result of being in a family like that or having a controlling parent or having you know the sort of uh abusive dynamics um, whether it doesn't matter where you come from is it's gonna f- be terrible <laughs> no matter what yeah yeah absolutely uh, and, and and that's and that's one of the the dynamics that like i said i i love about astromon is it, it dives deep into these these characters and you you learn more about them like even with with my character yo you know he's this big buff muscular dude uh kind of goofy but there, there's more to him and you've you know you've told me more about him like he he's caring like there, there's more to his backstory there's more to why he acts the way he does why he thinks the way he does it's not just some big buff like buff guy like there's different layers to to him and his dynamic and he's you know, a, I, i'm he's a optimist v- very much so yes <laughs> but like like in the sense of uh would you call it blind optimism like when you you just always think the good thing's going to happen even when you're presented with the bad thing i i would say that yeah absolutely yeah <laughs> that's pretty much how i i sum him up he's very simple you know he's probably the most simple character in the show but um i think that for his his like his character you don't need a lot i've, I've kind of found out that's the best type of character too is when you can sum him up quickly he's it's like you don't need all the extra the extra meat 
Exactly. Now, one one of the things that I want to talk about um, in regards to Astromon and just trying to get the word out there, you know, you've had to go through, you know, creating, you know, a, a, a script for your pilot, creating all these characters, you know, creating the art. Um, you know, when I look at your your Newgrounds page, like you've uploaded art, you know, basically since 2019. But, you know, you only had one submission back in 2019, and it was a beautiful illustration of a night sky. Um, and there's a tree there and an, and an owl in the tree. But all of your art for the, oh, the majority that was like of your a, art from I went 2020. To a, sorry, I went to a, a painting class with my girlfriend and we were painting there he's like paint the sky and he gave us like the picture and i was like that's boring so i like made it purple and put an owl in it <laughs> it, it i like it though I, I i love the contrast of the colors i, I love the shouting it, it looks beautiful but in looking at you know your art from all of <laughs> like 2020 you know you, you see the early renditions of your characters from Astromon, like the very first submission that you have Dude, those of are 2020 terrible. are just these little characters. They're so <laughs> just like the bad. these little character sketches. Yeah. <laughs> like you you have yo, you have you have Charlie, you have Monica, and I'm assuming well, I have that's a, Dusty, right? I think so. I think it's Dusty. And actually the girl before doesn't really look like her. Like it doesn't look like Monica. I actually <laughs> didn't so I, I originally didn't have a female character as part of the main group and i was like that's weird so i just drew that person whatever it is and then like i slowly developed this this uh dynamic between the monica and dusty's of, which is probably one of my favorite parts of the the show is is um the concept of the rental sister and just how fucking strange that is um but it's a real thing, and actually, people—that's a job in in uh, some countries where they. I know Japan; it's it's kind of popular now, where you can hire someone to be your dad, or you can hire someone to pretend to be your <laughs> brother, you know. But for for the rental sister thing, it's actually specifically for um, this hikikomori type thing, which is Dusty's situation, um, what he's kind of inspired from. So, at first, I had her as like uh, the friend. You know, she was the friend who wants to help. And then I was like, that's not really convincing. Because no friend, no matter how good of friends you are, is going to put up with this motherfucker. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like I made him kind of <laughs> shitty. So like, it's true. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I was like, this isn't really believable. So then I, I made it like she's that's her job. You know, like she was hired by the mom to pretend to. Be, and he's so delusional and he's so fucked up on his drug that he takes that he doesn't know the difference if she's his sister or not. Like when he talks to her, he talks to her like like his sister. Like she talks like, to him. Like blood like, relative, yeah. Yeah, like and then they both get so delusional to, to the point where they're like both talking to each other like they're brother and sister. And it's that's like it's a super kind of weird thing, but I fucking love it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it's cool to see them, um, you know, grow over this time period. And, you know, now they basically have you know, now that they're actually here and people kind of see the the dynamic between them a little bit within the trailer. You know, I, I'm excited to see how it all, uh, you know, how it all plays out, because yeah, like I said, I've seen the rough drafts. I, I know what happens. I, I, I I'm excited to get the you know the real it's, or just the real depiction of of them on screen instead of just on paper on a script of course it's also much different than last time you read it i know like, I, it, it, yeah you have to send it to me so i can actually take a peek at it because i want to i want to see um the the final it's, concept that you it's come very up with. different i actually my brother my older oldest brother is uh he's a writer that's what he does for a living um, he actually corrects people's scripts. That's what he. So like, if you have an idea for something, uh, you hire him. You tell him his, your idea, and then he kind of tells you if it works, what works, what doesn't work, and he sort of helps you uh, do that. So he did that with me when we were on vacation at my parents' house, and he's like helping me sort out my ideas, and then he showed me how he writes. So I I completely rewrote the whole thing. 
that's actually something that I we could talk about is yeah go ahead man is, is um when if you ever dis- which you should if you have an idea and you really want to tackle it go for it don't fucking like you know ever you know you could sit around and be like oh well maybe this won't happen but fuck that go for it and if you do make sure something i did not do make sure you finish your whole fucking script before you even begin the teaser trailer whatever you're gonna do because damn i added a lot of shit after that (laughs) and i'm like i'm like trying to add like this other character right on all the you know there's another character on some of the art pieces that were out another character on some of the the character design sheets that are out and you know people are gonna look at that shit and be like who the fuck is this (laughs) They're gonna because they're not in they're not in the teaser because I wrote the teaser probably a year ago now, and uh, yeah. So just if I could give any advice, literally just finish your idea first, and then make sure you know what the fuck you want it, the end product to be one hundred percent, and then and then try to try to like figure it out. Yeah, that yeah that that's good advice too. Like. Because I, I know that there's a lot of people out there who have a concept and, and they just start it up and they go through it and, you know, they'll finish like they'll finish a draft and they think it's, you know, that your first draft is your is your last draft and, and they'll start working on, you know, animating or or just trying to come up with a different story or, or just follow through with the story. And, mm-hmm. you know, they they miss key points that they could have added in the very first part. And it just makes you know everything a little jumbled and and not well thought out so yeah you know, that, well, I, that, yeah I, I think the worst part of it is when you are like oh this could have been better if i would have just like been more patient <laughs> have patience <laughs> that's the moral of the, the fucking show yeah like yeah it's like taking taking the time especially something as as thought out as as this where you're trying to come up with your own series you want to make sure that it's it's well thought out that all possibilities are thought of that everyone's storyline kind of feeds into it. You know, I, I, when I've written my own skits, you know, I want to try to put something together that feeds the story that keeps it going to the point where when you're at the end, it makes sense. And you're not just reaching for stuff. Like you want to create portions of your story right. where it feeds into it and builds on the setting. And, and, I, I was putting together a story um, a while ago, and I really want to get back to it because I want to make it an audio drama. And and the concept I have was was to me it was really cool. And I was working with uh, another writer on it, and he loved the idea. And we were just building like each chapter of uh, of of this story. And you know, I had these simple concepts. I'm like, all right, this is what I have. And he goes, that's great. But what about this? I'm like, oh shit. He goes, yeah, and. Based off of that, what about this? I'm like, oh shit! So right. take, taking the time to sit down, write out um, um, like a little a synopsis of what you want your story to be. Write a little outline. Like have have the you want to basically break down each chapter with a theme. How like how your chapter is going to feed into that theme. How it's going to build on it. How it's going to feed into progressing your story further. The more you do that, the more it turns into a story that you are happy with, uh, where the end result is something that you can be proud of and just ties everything together. So I'm Absolutely. I'm glad I'm glad that your brother was able to work with you and and help you with um, your ideas and basically come up with this final draft for the pilot episode. And you know, I'm excited to see, you know, what the story has evolved into. And like I said, everything that I've seen so far about Astromon has been beautiful and I'm excited for it. You know, I, I have no like I I have no doubt that it's gonna be, you know, a great success, you know, when we get the pilot episode out there, you know. Just based off of the small little, you know, based off the trailer, the the small little commercial spots that you've created for them, you know, basically parroting, you know, four kids and you know the 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 late night sexy phone calls <laughs> i saw that one today and that was absolutely hilarious you know there, there's just so much with astromon that that's really cool and you know i i know it's been it, it i i'm pretty sure it's been a pain at time for you um especially you know putting together 
um, your Indiegogo page. Um, you, 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 yeah. you were telling me before we jumped on here, you know, there's a lot of cool stuff that y- you learn through it and some stuff that, you know, is now experience for when you try to do this later. You know, what were some of the, you know, the pros and cons of, you know, working and, and, and putting together an Indiegogo page? Well, Indiegogo is, is nice because you can get the money regardless if you make your goal. So uh, what that means for me is I had originally in mind like a 10 minute uh, animated pilot. If I get half of my goal, I could make a five minute pilot. You know, I could always make something out of it. Uh, yeah. Even if I just take the whatever we get and. I have to save up money myself and fund it myself. You know, I'll, I'll fucking do that. And then even if I have to cut the script, you know, it's, a, it's, it's really long right now. That's the problem. So I'm going to have to cut things out. But um, yeah, because animation's expensive. So I learned all about that because I actually <laughs> originally thought I was going to need like $15,000. And I was like, for 10 minutes of animation, that should be fine. And then, uh, like, the day before I launched, I was like, wait, how much does this animator charge? How much does this animator charge? And I kind of averaged it out. And I was like, oh, fuck, I'm, like, really low. (laughs) Like, (laughs) $25,000 low. Or more than, yeah, $25,000. So I I raised it, and it's a very high number. But unfortunately, well, I understand why it is. But unfortunately for me, uh, it's animations an expensive uh, thing to hire for but yeah yeah it, um, it, it it's no joke at how pricey it can be yeah. but in the I grand mean, if, scheme if you of things, want yeah if you want good animation it's cost good money i mean it's just how it is exactly now say you were yeah you know, it for those who who don't know what danny's goal is to completely fund uh the pilot episode he's aiming for forty thousand dollars and yes like he said it's a lot of money um, and we are, you know, praying and we are hoping that we do get to, you know, that amount. Um, but if you were, you know, say, say somebody was, you know, if people were willing to chip in and, and get to that goal of $40,000, what do you plan on using that money for? Like, what, what were some of the things that you want to take that money and, and put it towards when, you know, putting together the, the pilot for, uh, Astromon? It would all go towards animation. <laughs> Touche. Touche. I would I would literally be pay even if we got forty thousand dollars, I would be paying voice actors out of pocket, most likely. Maybe there would be enough for voice acting, but probably not. Um, because also the the budget for that was based on mostly around one uh, the animator who did the last shot, uh, Bria, Bria um, her price, because she includes animation, color, uh, backgrounds, and post effects in hers. And it's like $3,600 a minute. Um, wow. So you add that up to 10 minutes and it's a lot of money. But yeah. Yeah. So that would pretty much, that covers that. But you, I also can't expect one animator to do the whole fucking thing. Um, exactly that'd be, that'd be crazy so you know i gave myself instead of thirty six thousand, i put 400 or sorry 40 uh because you know just in case other people cost more even uh, i'm not sure how that would end up working out but that's pretty much it i mean i just yeah it's an expensive thing but i was like fuck it i want to try to do it and actually i wasn't even going to try to do it and then uh i was just Honestly, I was just fucking around for a long time. And I was talking <laughs> to this uh, this animator, and he was like, who ended up not even animating the, the pilot or the uh, the trailer. And he was like, oh, dude, we should go for this. This is sick. I want to animate the, t- the teaser for it. And I was like, seriously? Like, this is a good idea? You think? This-? He's like, yeah, this is, this is awesome. <laughs> and I was like, okay. I was like, oh, cool. So like, and then I checked out his animation stuff because he was just doing character designs for me. Like I would send him sketches and terrible uh, drawings and he would make them cool, <laughs> basically. That's how that process <laughs> worked. Uh, 
Yeah, and then basically he was just like, yeah, he talked me into it pretty much. And then once I got like, you know, a little bit into it, then I was like, fuck it, I have to do it. And then he he took, it was a lot of months, and then he uh, had to bail on it because he got busy with life, as people do. As Uh, it happens. Sure, and then I I went to Newgrounds, and I uh, reached out, or... And then Wanda reached out to me with Carmen, and then we made that shit. It started, I think he messaged, I checked today, he messaged me in February. So it took a while. It, I, I remember when we first posted, uh, uh, or I, I remember when you were first reaching out, just trying to find someone to help out with the trailer. Like, I remember you telling me, like, hey, man, like, I want to put a trailer together, you know, like a little teaser trailer do you know any animators? And I said, well, I, I know animators, but I don't know if they you know, will specialize in, you know, the, the anime style that you're looking for. Just reach out on Newgrounds and see if anyone would be interested. And I'm, I'm really glad that, you know, Wanda and Carmet were willing to help you out with this because, you know, just based off of the teaser trailer, they did such a great job. It, it worked really well. And Bria did such a great job with the backgrounds and with the, the final, uh, like the final clip of, of uh of the trailer like i i love like the computer glitch scenario basically yeah. showing dusty coming out of out, out of his high a little bit like his his reality <laughs> is morphing a little bit it's really cool you know yeah, it, it, that whole- it just shows like it shows the the potential of of the show and what it does have to offer yeah that whole the whole like the three um small sketches that we did we have the the four kids parody we have the <laughs> the late night um phone call parody and then we have the end the ending where he's like next up on astronaut oh shit i spent all the money on drugs and we need funding <laughs> um those three things were supposed to be like memes like because because gianni his whole twitter pretty much is just he makes memes and voice acts them and like it, those things pop up so I was like, dude, we should make like silly ass memes for for this. And then I I sent it to to Bria and she she sent me these animations that were like fucking beautiful. <laughs> and I was like, holy shit. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, like even though like even though those little um those little commercial spots are are meme based, they're freaking hilarious. And and if you if you grew up you know, watching Pokemon, watching Digimon, watching Yu-Gi-Oh! You saw, like, you were part of the the four kids programming uh, yeah. as a part of the, the, <laughs> the, the early morning. So the very first time that I saw that little commercial spot and it was like, you know, we'll be right back with four tykes. I'm like, oh, it's four kids. That's awesome. So, like, you, you've made it, like, its own little unique um, meme, pretty much. But at the same time, you're also paying homage to um the content um you know from you know the animes that potentially probably you know piqued your interest at a young age and got you interested into you know anime related uh, cartoons like i i I know you know i i was very entrenched in pokemon and digimon and Yu-Gi-Oh when i was young so i I would see that all the time i was was so that in dragon ball in Yu Yu and yes and 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 dragon ball yes I, Lo- low key, low key Sailor Moon, but like I had older brothers, so you know uh, that was like when they weren't home. I was like, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, I, I never, I never got that much into. It was on like it was on like right when I got home from school, so I'd like watch it or at least catch like the last half of the episode. But I remember like, you know, pretending to hate it when my brothers were around. <laughs> this is a girl show, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a seven year old. Now, I, I know that one of the things that's been kind of tough with, you know, marketing um, or, or just with, you know, getting this show funded has just been the marketing side of things. You know, we have the Indiegogo page, you know, uh, you've been putting ads out there on on YouTube, you've been putting it on Twitter, you know, and, and I've been and I even put out my own Facebook ad just to try to get more views to the Indiegogo page. But you just recently had something happen on Twitter that you told me before we went live um, where Twitter just said, F you, you can't, you know, use Twitter ads anymore. Yeah, <laughs> go, I in, go into that. 
so I believe yesterday I posted. Um, it's pretty much just like a typical like voice actor, uh, you know, post just saying Nicolette Kong as Monica, you know, the actress and the character she's playing. Um, and I in the description, I like to to write about the character because I feel like the characters are kind of interesting people. Um, <laughs> but I'll just read it. It says Nikki is voicing Monica. A rental sister hired to help the Yakuza boss's son, who is a drug addicted shut in, so one day he can take over the clan. Unfortunately, being a little sister, with quotations, causes mental issues of her own. Uh, apparently, that is, that violates their terms of selling sexual products or sex of some sort. I'm not sure what part of Little sisters or drug addic addicts is uh, selling sex, but I'm curious to know because it sounds kind of fucked up and that's not my intention here. Um, so I actually, at first, they, uh, they, they flagged just the ad and they said, oh, you can't post this ad. This won't go through. And then I was like, that's stupid. And then I explained like why that was stupid in the email and I sent it. And then they emailed me back like 10 minutes later. Hey, we reviewed your ad again and your account has violated this policy and you will no longer be able to boost your posts at all until you delete this post. And I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> didn't like, thanks, Twitter. What the hell? Yeah, it didn't go the way I thought it would. You know, <laughs> I'm just putting like fucking ten dollars, 20 bucks and, you know, in, in the post just to, you know, because Twitter buries everything. Um, especially oh, yeah. like like I don't use Twitter that much because I think it's really bad for you. I try not to. That's and, true. You know, I try not to use it very much. But when you don't use it, your shit gets buried. So very true. Uh, I'm, you know, posting and like people are liking the shit and all that. But yeah, now I, I can't. Uh, no more ads for me on Twitter, which is maybe it's <laughs> maybe it's for the better. but maybe like like we joked about it too like you know it, it's okay for you know cardi b to you know post up a, a video or like you know promote her video of her you know spreading her ass cheeks and you know and her legs and showing off you know every tidbit of her body but you can't post an ad you know you know referring to a, a rental sister um who has to Which, take care of okay. her like drug addicted but, <laughs> but like basically yeah brother. it's, it's like <laughs> If you're a real person, you could just spread your asshole all, all over the internet. <laughs> but like, if if you're a, a fucking cartoon character, <laughs> people treat you like you're fucking real. It's so fucking strange to me. I do not understand oh, man. that at all. Like, you you gotta love Twitter, man. You you gotta love it. It's so <laughs> batshit crazy. Like, are we really trying to like fighting for uh, you know, cartoon rights and shit? It's crazy. <laughs> So, like, as as you continue promoting this, uh, I know you've been doing the the character, um, basically highlighting the voice actors and the characters that they're promoting. Like, what are some of the other, um, like, marketing ideas you have for you know further getting the word out there for Astromon? Oh, just posting every day. <laughs> um, yeah, so I I don't have any more videos. I think I posted the last one today, which is the I put it on Newgrounds. I put it on YouTube, but I didn't really, I only uh, actually shared the Newgrounds movie. Um, I think I did it opposite the first time and it didn't really work in my favor. Uh, I don't know why I didn't. I usually only share the Newgrounds stuff and then YouTube stuff is just there if people want to check it out. Uh, but I think I, sh I shared the YouTube one first for the teaser. So... Yeah, that didn't work in my favor. So now I'm pretty much, I have a bunch of um, character things. Like I need to share um, June, June in, as Charlie. Um, I need Isabel as Hima, uh, Maddie as Ina, and all, so on and so forth. Um, and then besides that, I have a few art pieces, like paintings that a couple people have done. Um, I know Newgrounds, you're not supposed to post other people's art, you know? You, yeah. You know, I 
try not to do that. I'm only doing that for this if um, they don't have a new grounds. Because there's a couple, one guy that I met through Instagram who I love his art. So I had him do a, a sick booty shot. And then uh, <laughs> uh, there's another artist who does not have new grounds either for some reason. I always ask people like they're fucking insane. When they tell me they don't have the new grounds, like why? What's why? Wrong? Why the fuck do you? What's wrong with you? <laughs> so you're doing God's work. You're trying to get more people to new grounds. So you, that's that's why you're a good guy, Danny. <laughs> I I literally like I when I I sent uh, this a buddy of mine a message like, hey, do you have a new grounds? And they're like, no, I don't. And I was like, you should totally make one. You'll probably get front page. People with, on new grounds would love your shit. And I was like, dude, I sound like a fucking salesman for new grounds. Like, I need to shut up. <laughs> well, like, I, I'm like the same way, you know. Um, you know, as as everyone knows, like, I, I've gotten some notoriety on TikTok, and whenever I do um, like little live streams on there, you know, I, I will probably talk about new grounds at least once every single time. I, I, I'm a basically walking billboard for new grounds. I'm, I'm yeah, free ad. That's... I'm free ad space for Tom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel. Well, like, that's not a bad thing, but it's, I think it was, like, how I said it. I was like, oh, shit, he's going to think I'm, like, a bot, like, this whole time. I was just, like, a Newgrounds bot. <laughs> a Newgrounds bot commission, commissioning him just to, like, get him <laughs> over on the site. <laughs> I love it, though. I wouldn't mind being a bot for, <laughs> for Newgrounds. <laughs> and not a bad gig. Absolutely not. Well, I, I, I think we're getting to um, a point where we can and things here for the for the night but you know before we go danny you know one, one of the things that i like to ask our guests whenever i host at least um and it basically just revolves around being on new grounds and you know around the concept we were just talking about you know getting to new grounds and posting your stuff and promoting yourself so for those who are you know just now getting into animation getting into game development you know illustrating composing voice acting what are some you know career tips that you would you know, that you would bestow upon them and encourage them to you know continue in their career and build um this is gonna sound familiar to you because i'm pretty sure uh zin that's how you pro- how do you pronounce his fucking name zin 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 uh, zin 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 yeah okay zin zin yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the guy who the the guy who double booked today um <laughs> <laughs> get him no uh he, i've heard him say this um literally don't be afraid to reach out to other artists and musicians and everybody reach out to people um also use the fucking community boards they're so helpful use them post to them you know if you need help with shit post to them uh also don't just post this things and then like run away in the corner uh Look at other people's work, and when you like things, tell them. You know, people really like that. And then you'll find friends, and you'll build your own communities within the community. And uh, also, don't be afraid to host your own collabs, because that's probably the best experience you're going to, you know, working with many different types of people, you learn the most. So, Yeah, I, I agree with that entirely. You know, don't be afraid to reach out to fellow creators. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't have been able to work with a lot of people if it wasn't just reaching out to them. Uh, like I, I found I found out that Danny was a new grounder when I reached out to him and it was great. Right. And, you know, and I wouldn't be working with so many great composers, writers and voice actors if I didn't want to create my own collaboration, uh, the voice acting collaboration. I take it upon yourself to you know if you want to live out your your goals and your dreams you know put the pedal to the metal and do what you can to exactly. live out your dreams yeah so an, an example um the first time i heard voice acting and i was like well besides like as a kid watching cartoons but like as a creator you know i heard gianni as like a, a cat or some shit some really silly dumb shit that wasn't it was it was it was fun um and i heard it i was like oh that dude's voice is really cool and then i was like and then like a few months later i was working on my first thing and i I needed a narrator just to say like the title or something 
And I was I reached out to my friend and was like, hey, who was that guy with the cool voice? He's like, oh, it's Gianni. Cool. So I reached out to him and I've been working with him for like five years now. Something like that. Exactly. Like, you know? So yeah, when you hear something, when you see something you like, let people know. You know, if you need help, let people know. Yeah. Well, everyone's around new grounds to help each other out. Or you should be. If you're not, get the fuck out of here. No, I'm just kidding. But. <laughs> yeah, like I I I'm kinda like the same way. Like, you know, um I, I think it was even after we had uh Hey OPC Chris Pache on here. You know, he he said the same thing. Like he gave the same advice. Like if you want to work with somebody, just reach out to them. So my like, man, I would love to work with Chris. I think that'd be cool. So I reached out to him and said, Hey man, I'm taking your advice. I'm reaching out to you. I want to work with you. He goes, All right, cool, dude. And we literally put a, a rap song together and it's possibly gonna be on his next uh mixtape. So that, you can catch rad. me <laughs> you can catch me rapping with you can catch me rapping with uh with Hey OPC. Uh-huh. And I wrote my own I wrote my own lyrics and uh you know he put together the beat and you know, we came up with a, a pretty solid hook and um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty dope little song and I'm excited for you guys to hear it. But yeah, don't be afraid to reach out to fellow new grounders. Everyone's very supportive. That's the cool thing. And, and you know, before we end things here tonight, um, aside from Astromon, is there anything else that you want to plug here, Danny? Uh, Dr. Good operating theater. Um, I know I have people messaging me right now. Like what, ideas i have and stuff um i'll get back to you as soon as i can um but honestly just just uh dr good is happening soon it'll be out in october and then astromon hopefully i get to make some really cool content for you for everybody hell yeah and and that'll be the the thing that we end on please please donate to astromon we're gonna post a link to the indiegogo page any amount that you donate works. Um, you know, we have different tiers that you can donate um, as low as yeah. five dollars. Also, but any um, any amount helps. Also, if you click back it, people don't know this shit about Indiegogo because they they uh, the way they put the page it's so terrible. But if you click back it, you can donate anything you want without like the whole without getting anything for it. So if you want to donate a dollar, yeah, a, two dollars, three dollars, whatever, you could do that. But you have to click back it, and then it gives you that option to donate whatever you want. I realize people have no idea that you can even do that. And they're like, <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, and like we said, any amount helps. Yeah, if even if you want to hit the back the back it uh, button and donate a dollar, that will help. You know, any amount going to Astromon and, and allowing Danny to live out his dream of creating um, um, an, an original anime is going to be, you know, it, it's, it helps out in any way possible. So, you know, Dan, like we've already talked about tonight, Danny is, you know, he's been a collab organizer and has given a lot of new grounders the opportunity to live out their dreams of being an animator, a composer, a voice actor. Now I feel it's, it's our time to help him out and help him fund his dream of creating, um, you know, an original anime. So Danny, I want to say thank you for joining the new grounds podcast tonight, buddy. It, yeah, it's been a pleasure. You. Yeah, it's been a pleasure chatting with you. This is literally the first time that you and I have ac- actually talked together voice to voice. You know, we've talked on Twitter, on Discord, TikTok, and all the different social media platforms. Instagram, this is the first time. YouTube, comments. Instagram, <laughs> <laughs> all that stuff. You know, it's it, it's been a pleasure talking <laughs> to you, buddy, and actually getting to hear you. And you know, I, I'm very excited and I'm very thankful to be a part of Astromon. And it's been a pleasure having you, my dude. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And thanks for so listening. It, absolutely. Thanks for tuning in tonight, guys. Um, we, you know, I know we've had a, a double feature today, so thank you for you know coming back to the live show tonight and showing your support. Um, it hasn't. I don't know if it was announced earlier. I didn't hear it, but tune in next week. We got uh, Hans Van Harken coming on the show. We have the Swain coming on, I believe, and they're going to be talking about. Um, Madness Project Nexus, which is officially announced to be releasing at the end of September. They're going to be coming on and talking about uh, the game and talk about the trailer that Hans put together. So you don't want to miss out on that. Uh, Again, thanks for tuning in tonight and showing your support for the Newgrounds podcast. We love you guys. Take it easy. Thank you for listening to the Newgrounds podcast. This show is recorded live on our Discord server. Join us at bit.ly slash ngpdiscord. 
For the latest news, follow us on Twitter at the NG Podcast. Thank you to Waterflame for the use of his song, Gabberfly. Goodbye.